And today I'd like to talk to you about a topic that many have inquired about. It's about when your child is first diagnosed with epilepsy. Now what? I, before we begin, first I'd like to tell you a little about myself. I've had epilepsy for about 42 years now. I developed it at the age of five years old. At five years old, I was in my bedroom. At the time, I had an ear infection and I was diagnosed with a virus. My mother had heard gargling noise from my room and she came in to check on me. When she walked in, she saw me in bed. I was turning blue. I was gargling, foaming from the mouth with my eyes rolled back and my entire body shaking. She immediately called the ambulance and they took me to the hospital and they did extensive testing and they had to induce me in a coma because my brain was beginning to swell in the area of my head. As they were testing, they had found that I had encephalitis and that the virus had traveled to my brain. They weren't sure exactly what the outcome was gonna be. They said that there's a possibility I could be paraplegic or I could have extensive brain damage but they're really not sure what's gonna happen. So as time went on, it was about four days and my dad had told me that he was sitting by my bed and my dad was from Greece and in his hometown, in his church, they had a statue in front of the church that everybody used to pray to. And my father visualized that statue in his head and he said that he prayed to the statue and asked God to give me good health again. When he opened his eyes and he looked at me, a tear rolled down from my eyes. And I looked at him, the first thing I asked for was McDonald's french fries. I wasn't paraplegic and I didn't have brain damage, but I did have epilepsy. I struggled my whole life with epilepsy. It's been a very difficult road, lots of obstacles, more like a roller coaster, going up and down, up and down. And it seems like it's a forever ride that you don't know when it's gonna end. But I wasn't going to let it get me down, and I wasn't going to let me it let it stop me from living life. So as time went on, I just did everything I could to live a normal life as can be. But in the beginning, it was very hard. I was in denial for a long time. I didn't want to accept the fact that I had epilepsy. I didn't want to face everything that I was going through, and I thought if I could just just put it behind me and just act and think that I was normal and I could do everything everybody else can do. And just, if I didn't think about it, I could just make believe it wasn't there. But throughout my life, I lived a long time with uncontrolled seizures. I took many different seizures because when the virus encephalitis had traveled to my brain, it caused scar tissue damage. To this day, they can't find the locations of the scar tissue because the scar tissue is so small that they believe that the scar tissue was throughout my entire brain. So I would take seizures from a focal seizure to a partial complex seizure to a grand mal seizure. You can never really find uh, exactly, I never knew what type of seizure I was gonna have next or where I was gonna have it. And for a long time, I didn't want to accept that I had epilepsy. But eventually I learned the best way to, to, to understand and to deal with epilepsy is to accept that you have it to love yourself because it's not going away. No matter what, your disorder is gonna be there the rest of your life. So the best way to handle it is to say, yes, I have epilepsy. I love myself for who I am and I'm gonna move ahead and make the best of it. And that's what I did. I used positive thinking as my way of survival. I always believed that everything happens for a reason. And I might not know at that time what the reason was but I knew, I knew that there was a purpose, there was a reason all this was happening. So as time went on, I had long battles with it and it took a very long time for my seizures to get under control. And as, I, as time went on, I, I started to go out into the working world and I actually had the, the dream job of my life and I actually, was fired from the job because one of the producers saw me have a grand mal seizure and he walked over me and kept walking. And 30 minutes later, I was released from my position. But I still didn't let it get, get it to me. 
I said, I wasn't going to let this happen, let this get me down. And I realized that having epilepsy actually made me a better person because I learned how to be more compassionate, more loving, more understanding. I looked at life differently. I actually started to have gratitude for the little things in life. Out of everything I was went through in life, I, I really learned to really understand and, and really feel for other people. And I had written over 20 books in the course of, of the 40 years that I've had epilepsy. And I've gotten letters from all over the United States and Canada, people thanking me because I've helped them. And then I finally realized how powerful words can be. The words of wisdom can be so powerful that you could say a few things, but you could help somebody to, uh, to, to the amount that you don't even realize. Epilepsy, you know, has taught me lots of things in life. But recently I was at a meeting and I was sitting next to a woman and she was a mom and her child was just diagnosed with epilepsy. And it was very, very difficult. And as a mom now, I realized, but I didn't realize back then, that being a caretaker, being a parent with epilepsy is very difficult. And the problem is, is that you don't have control. You can't control the situation. You can't take a magic wand and say, hey, it's all gonna go away. Because it's really, you, you don't have any control over the situation. So you have to really, you know, so what do you do as a parent? The doctor says your child has epilepsy. This is the first time you've heard of this disorder. You've seen your child have seizures. You can't do anything. What do I do? How can I help my child? The first thing I would suggest is to be your own doctor. And when I say that, what I mean is that don't always rely 100% on your doctor when you go in there. Do the research. Find out about the disorder. Learn as much as you can about the disorder. And then before you go to the doctor, write a list of questions. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Asking your doctor questions is the best thing you can do because you and your doctor can develop a relationship that is bonding, that is a very positive relationship where he can understand you or she can understand you better and they, you could help each other. So your child gets the best treatment. I also highly suggest that you also create a journal. Writing down seizures is very important because your child might have a certain pattern. They may be certain triggers, certain things that trigger your child's seizures. And by writing each seizure in a, in a journal, the date, what your child ate that day, what your child was doing that day, did they sleep late, did they get a good night's sleep the night before, writing all these things you can mean a lot. Also, stress is a big factor in seizures too. Stress could also cause seizures. It's a possible um, reaction um, when you overwhelm yourself. It can sometimes bring on seizures for people. Write all these things in the journal. Understand your child. Try to understand what's causing these seizures. 70% of the time, people don't know why the child or the adult was diagnosed with epilepsy. But we might be able to with writing things down and tracking things that you might be under, understand what triggers the child seizures so you can do things to actually make the seizures decrease. They also have apps that you can actually put on your phone that you can you put all the information very easily and it'll actually analyze the algorithm in the application will analyze a lot of things for you and it might actually light a light bulb in your brain and then you realize oh my god I didn't realize that my child is having a seizure every Tuesday right before they have this certain class you know or my child ate a lot of sodium a lot of unhealthy foods and the next day they had a seizure or they didn't get enough of sleep and then you start you can start creating a healthier lifestyle for your child that actually might help also I suggest the epilepsy uh, foundation has a uh, an amazing website. Their website is really good. They have a lot of good information. Everything is um, written or it has been reviewed by doctors. Um, they have a lot of links to a lot of different resources and support groups because I think support is very important also because you can learn a lot from another person who's had the disorder or another caretaker 
and you can understand the disorder better and help each other through support groups. And they have a lot of different helpful books and different things in, on, the, on the website. And this could be a very useful resource for you as well. I also like to discuss too, is that the emotions. One thing I've learned is that when you go on the internet and you type in epilepsy, you'll find the causes, the treatments, you'll find out the definition of epilepsy, you'll, you'll see videos explaining different aspects of epilepsy, but you won't see any, a lot of information at all, practically none about the emotional and the mental aspect of epilepsy. The frustration, the anger, the stress that you feel, the scared feelings, going to bed every night, not knowing if your child's gonna have a seizure. And then there's a lot of information on the website that you know is not so resourceful, that people write things and some of the information isn't very good. A lot of that information can scare you. Even the information that's resourceful, you know, some of the information you read could be very scare, scary to a, a mother or a father or, or a family member or a caretaker who's just found out that their child has epilepsy. So I, I really suggest that, you know, that you start to actually write, have a, a diary to ex express how you feel each day, to talk to your child, have good communication with your child, try to explain to them what's going on the best you can. And if they're very young, you know, tell them little things little by little. And as they get older, try to explain more and more in a very simplex way. That way the child understands what's going on. You don't need to scare them, but you can give them an understanding and make them realize too that they are just as wonderful as everybody else. They're no different. That they have the abilities to, to, do, to do whatever they want and they can soar through the skies if they want. That life doesn't end because you have epilepsy. Some people have diabetes. Some people have you know, a stress disorder. Some people have high blood pressure. You know, we can go on and on of the list of health conditions in this world. Everybody has something. So, you know, it's just, it's just an other condition and you have to learn how to live with it. And as I said before, being angry and, and being mad that you have the disorder or your child has a disorder isn't gonna get you anywhere. Except that your child has epilepsy, have your child learn to accept themselves for who they are, make your child feel that they're wonderful, make them feel proud of who they are, keep giving them tons of encouragement, talk to them on a daily basis, and really just keep pumping in because self-esteem is so important. If they have a good self-esteem of themselves, they can pretty much accomplish anything in life. Epilepsy won't stop them. Make them feel that they are, they are a great person and that they have the ability to, to conquer all their dreams and just stay by them and watch over them and explain to them their limitations and that they can't overdo certain things. And little by little, just keep doing your research and keep going over everything. And together, you'll be able to get through this. I got through it and so can you. If you have any questions or if you'd like to talk to me, leave a question in the comment box and I'd be happy to answer any, any questions. You have to realize that there's, there's tons of resources out there. There's tons of support groups. There's tons of events about epilepsy. You need to just do your research and just be able to accept the situation and take it day by day. Because you have the, the components is just taking it day by day, being positive, and just you know doing the best you can to find the ways to make your child life a good one. And also before I go, I just wanna stress that lifestyle is so important. Make sure your child gets a good night's sleep. Make sure your child's eating healthy foods. A lot of people don't realize, but the foods they put in their body and the foods that you feed your child, if they're unhealthy, if they're full of sugar and sodium and they're full of artificial ingredients and all these things, those toxins lay in your child's body, they build in your child's body, it causes stress on the organs, and it could also, it could also decrease their focus, and it also can trigger seizures. Everything matters, and you have to keep that in mind. So everything you do, 
do the best you can and that's all you can do. But lifestyle, communication, and just accepting it and loving it, loving your child and don't blame yourself. These are all things you can do to better the situation for epilepsy. Thank you so much. I hope my video has helped. And as I mentioned before, if you have a comment, just leave it in the comment box. Thank you so much.